the hard-charging Kenny Bogner still has dreams of facing Ray Mancini during the time period in which this fight takes place. Facing Boom Boom has been the career-long pursuit of his, and here he is taking on what is thought to be a tune-up against an opponent that turns out to be a lot better than what his team imagined. That opponent is Edwin Carrette. Curette is brought in on four weeks' notice, and in his last fight, he was a last-minute substitute that earned a draw against the tough Chris Calvin. Now, Curette came to Boston from Puerto Rico four years earlier, joining the Petronelli brothers and marvelous Marvin Hagler at their gym in Brockton, Massachusetts. Uh, he works as a machine operator, but uh, came to the Boston area specifically to become a professional boxer. Eddie's a dark horse in our stable, Pat Petronelli said. He's a scientific boxer, but he can hit you, too. He can punch. For three years, and he comes out with a straight right hand. Bingo. Well, Tourette will attack Bogner. Bogner will attack Tourette. We'll find out early because we'll find out who backs up in this uh, exchange of punches. I think this fight could be much like the Barkley Sims fight we just saw. Tourette last fought November 10th. A 10 round draw up in Boston, Massachusetts against Chris Calvin. Bogner we saw here November 3rd in Atlantic City. When he defeated Michael Brown, stopped Brown at the end of the fifth round, put him down twice in the fifth after Brown with Jarrett. And Wagner was supposed to fight Bramble in January, but that fight fell through. There was a court action, and Wagner's people uh, won the court suit and uh, did not have to fight Bramble. The jab of Tourette getting in early as it usually does against Kenny Wagner. Don't be too misled. Tourette may land the jab, he may land the straight right, but remember, Kenny Wagner has a way of absorbing that punishment coming back. Good luck, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Right on the chin. Wagner had signed the fight Bramble with the intention that, or with the idea, that it was supposed to be on paper, that the winner would fight Mancini. Mancini. And that fight fell through, and Mancini suffered a shoulder injury. Light coming from the nose of Bogner already in the first round as Tourette landed. Some nice combination. Final seconds of round one, scheduled for ten. We'll be back to Atlantic City in just a moment. With a great tune-up for Bogner, even though he only got a draw. Calvin is tough and he fights in very similar style to, uh, as Bogner, so that could help correct for this fight. Now there's Bogner getting under the jab, slipping it, which he needs to do more of, but when he does, he's got to make correct pay. A little more head movement by Bogner, got it. Nice right hand by Correct. Tourette is on occasion leaving his left jab out there, and Bogner trying to counter over it with the right. There it was. Quickly trying to tie Bogner up, pushes him back into the corner. That right hand had some effect, and it was over a lazy jab by Tourette. We're coming, charging right back in. This Bogner has him a little bit hurt, and I'm surprised Kenny is even more aggressive. Now, Tourette on the move a little more. A little more respect for the Bogner power. The right hand scored for Kenny Bogner. And he's given Edwin Curette something to think about as we come to the end of round two. And he came on strong in that round. This is round three. Interesting to listen into the uh, corners between rounds. We heard the Wagner corner say, you've got him. And uh, in the Curette corner, blood coming from the nose of Kenny Wagner. Lancing right hand landed by Tourette. Wagner landing on the inside in close. Got the left hand in there. The thing about Wagner is no matter how many punches he takes, he is so explosive. At any time, he can just go and rip off a flurry of 10, 15 punches. Here he goes with a right hand. Tourette trying to keep him off. And Tourette backs, backs him up with a right hand. Tourette's right hand by Tourette again. And another right hand. Rock Bogner buckled his leg. Bogner trying to tie up Tourette. Why is Tourette holding on to the rope? Bad move at that point. Gives Bogner a moment or two to collect his thoughts. 
Caution from the referee. Bogner answers with a right. This is dangerous territory for Tourette. Even though he has Bogner hurt, he has got to be a little cautious about coming in here. This one Bogner's most dangerous. Again, that right hand is scoring for Edwin Tourette. How many times, though, have we seen Kenny Bogner fight his best when he's hurt? There is a rule of thumb in boxing these days. You never count Kenny Bogner out until the fight's over. The Red doing a good job. That was a wide left hook. And he scored. He is landing some big right hands, and he's got Bogner holding on the inside. That is an important thing because Bogner seldom does that. Good indication that he's going to rock. Well, as you said, when you feature look at Kenny Bogner, no fight is easy for him, and this one is just the same. Edwin Charette busting up the nose of Bogner. A lot of blood coming out, backing Bogner up. Good round for Charette. And this is the difference between Tourette and a Michael Brown. Brown, a journey where he was able to land some good shots to Bogner's head, but he did not have the power of Edwin Tourette. That's right. 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 Continues to drop that straight right hand in there. And comes sliding in behind it. Half a minute to go in round four. You don't see Bogner backing up too often. He's been backing up here in the fourth round. Looking to his corner for some... Help. A good combination by Charette. And again, the right hand was the one that dropped in. Coming to the final second, the round four. We're in Atlantic City, you're watching top rank boxing. Mark continues to come out of the nose of Kenny Bogner. Getting in a right hand uppercut. And a nice jab. The rest looks very good in this fight. We're midway through the fifth round. Bogner has not yet put his punches together very well. He's landed single shots, but nothing in a combination. There's a couple of good jabs for Kenny, and that punch has not landed much against Correct tonight. Bogner is the type of fighter. He, once he hurts you, and you never know when that can come. And I feel Mancini is like that. But once he gets the opening, he knows how to finish off his opponent. Absolutely, and a couple of good right hands may have stunned Tourette in that instance, but hard to tell. Now, Bogner used a vicious body attack against Michael Brown. He really hasn't shown us all that much body work in this fight. All of a sudden, though, Tourette looks tired. And they come right to the rope, right above us. Tourette wears down, I guarantee you, Bogner will be on him. You notice that they almost came through the ropes now. I reached up to protect you. You're a heck of a guy. <laughs> what did I do without you? <laughs> I'm your bodyguard. I know. Bogner opening up. Tourette rocks back. Bogner on left hand. Tourette holding on here. Late in round five. Big finish for Bogner in round five. Is he tired? We'll be back with more of our main event in just a moment. Heads to the center of the ring. There's Kenny Bogner to meet him. And Tourette drops the right hand in there. This is round six, scheduled for ten. Big, lightweight battle, and it's a good one. The crowd urging Kenny Bogner on. Let's check out scoreboard to see how he has it. Through the midway point. I have got Edwin Tourette ahead 4 to 1. Despite the good comeback at the end of the last round by Bogner, I really felt Tourette won the first two thirds of the round. I know you do not agree. Nice strong jab by Bogner. I've got Bogner ahead 3 to 2. I've got Bogner ahead 3 rounds to 2. I think he finished strongly, and I like, again, effective punches. I think Tourette is me. Tourette is wearing down. There's no doubt about that. And Bogner's going to that body. And if Edwin Tourette continues to wear down like this, Bogner will get him. There's no doubt about it. Mud continues to pour out of the nose of Kenny Bogner. But he had to be lifted by that big finish. One important development for Bogner is no cuts or run by Bogner. Tourette is hurt and wobbly. Fighting back for the right hand of his own. The explosive Kenny Bogner. I was going to say that Bogner has not caught over either eye. Important development for him. And Rene Reynone is the referee. Again, the right hand by Curette. And he almost tackles Bogner in the corner. And a warning from Reynone. There's a right hand for Bogner. The mouthpiece of Curette flies out. Half a minute to go in round six. Bogner with a 
and gentlemen, referee Vinnie Renoni stops this contest at the 28 second mark of the ninth round. A very severe cut over the left eye. The winner by TKO, Edwin Carrere. In this ring, the fans not through with this decision. Did you feel, Edwin, that it came from a headbutt? I was working with his eyes. No, I was working with his eyes. You feel it was a punch then? With a punch. Right hand. Would you like to fight Wagner again and, and clarify? I'd like, like to fight him, but in my hometown. All right, Edwin Corrette, it did not come from a butt. He feels, he feels it was a punch. Let's go back to Sam Rosen. Four days after this fight, this decision was overturned by the New Jersey State Athletic Commission, who declared Bogner as the winner by technical decision, uh, claiming that his cut was caused by a headbutt. Uh, they went to the scorecards, and all three judges had Bogner ahead. Uh, the Petronellis vowed legal retribution to no avail. Uh, strangely, no one from Curette's camp was invited to the uh, commission hearing. Only Bogner's people were invited to come. The result was an omen for Curette's career as he never got that big break and instead became a gatekeeper in the division. Uh, he took too many bouts on short notice and losing efforts and uh, earned a reputation as a five-round fighter who faded in the late rounds. Uh, he lost to some of the division's best of the time period like a Robin Blake, Livingstone Bramble, and Greg Haugen. Uh, every now and then he did score some upsets. He stopped Remo DiCarlo and gave Mickey Ward his first loss in a close fight back in 1987. Curette also scored a surprise points win over Glenwood Brown in 1992. For more on Kenny Bogner, please check out the link in the description box for his documentary uh, if you haven't seen it already. And thanks for watching.